All right. So if we go out here, let's go over what's happening for. Uh, I didn't see my equation in the lot over. What equation? The one that was like just showing the words and then going down. Flow charting? Yeah. Oh, I, that's another class that I teach. Okay, so malt right here and we are actually on week four so what that means when you say assignments that were due there the ones that have passed due was proximity and then i assigned alignment which is actually not due until midnight tonight illustrator was due last week too then um repetition the uh, actual assignment I'm, I'm giving you until the 16th, which is next Monday, I believe, but Photoshop will be due Tuesday night, tomorrow night, right, at midnight. And then what we're starting this week, you can always click on the page. That's the way this is laid out at the top of every week, shows you what we're going to do that week. And the assignments are actually located right below that. So here, uh, this week, we'll have the midterm test next Monday. So um, we're, what we go over today and Wednesday, uh, we're finishing up the design principles, the four basic design principles out of the yellow book, the design book. And today we'll talk about um, contrast a little bit, but I'm going to do something a little different too today. We're going to do the XD lesson some instead of just the contrast, but the last portion of that part that will be on the midterm, the rest of the book is on the final, but the midterm will be, um, we'll cover it today and um, we should get finished with it before Wednesday. If we don't, I'll touch on it Wednesday because then next Monday, we won't take the test in class. It will be available actually starting on the weekend and you can take it outside of class You're, because everybody can use their book. It's just that you're timed, okay? So you have to know where the answers are at and then you have to also do a, um, uh, redesign a little document and upload it and I'll remind you again on Wednesday because invariably students don't do that and that's worth more than a lot of the other questions on the test okay so you need to do that portion so that's um, we'll finish talking about the principal contrast and contrast with type today and that's what this discussion is then there's going to be um, a discussion your last assignment that has to do with those four principles although you will be applying those four principles all the rest of the semester but um, your last assignment will be called putting it all together and I'll show you that one and then this week you will also be responsible for the lessons five and six now I haven't had you in the Adobe XD book to put any of those in i'm just telling you these are where what we're where you should be at in there and um if you go over to assignments you'll see that i add change that group called adobe T tutorials and i have also added the indesign one which i didn't add in that sheet so these are the ones, but the XD you'll notice is worth 20 points. So all of those lessons that you're doing in XD, you will, the ends of those lessons, you've been working in those lesson folders. You'll zip those lesson folders and then you will upload that zipped file into here when you're completed at the end of the semester. Cause you notice it says October 13th is the due date on that. So that, that's up to you whether you want to try to do them all the night before or if you're working along, that's why I put in there which ones you should be on this week in that Adobe XD book, okay? Now, what the reason we're doing XD that way is because that's what you'll do your final project in. 
But if you learn a little bit about Illustrator, like if you're taking the Illustrator class or you take the Photoshop class already, or you've had InDesign, then any of those Adobe products will help you with XD. And you can also use them in conjunction, like when you create your logo for your final project, you'll probably want to use Illustrator, okay? And then you can import it into XD. So those are things that we'll, we'll look at XD a little bit uh, here today too. So does that help you with the assignments following what's due? Okay, so these, these design principles, you'll notice they're worth 25% of your overall grade. And the tutorials are only worth 10% of your overall grade because these show me whether you can apply um, or use those applications to actually do any of these, okay? And the same like your final project is 40% of your overall grade, test or 20%. Uh, and that's your participation up there. So the tutorials, I don't give you as much percentage because I mean, anybody should be able to follow along and create according to what the tutorial says. So what tells me whether this, like XD, whether you've learned it is when you do your final project because you have to actually use it and it doesn't tell you, hey, add this click on this, use the rectangle tool and do this. So it tells me whether you've learned it. If you don't go through those lessons, then you might have a hard time with your final project, okay? So that's why you have all this time to learn it and then use it later. Okay, any questions about these? Now, this is the one that um, I'm assigning uh, of the design principles, you'll notice there's not one labeled contrast because it's going to be, you're going to use that principle that we're going to learn today in this final one called putting it all together. And it's worth the most too. It's worth 30 points. So on this one, you'll watch what she tells you to do. And then you'll take both of these two uh, zipped files, which include the files that you need to complete what she tells you to do in that video there. You're going to create a, using your contrast is more what the Shakespearean newsletter is, and then the travel brochure, you apply all of those principles, okay? I think I'll probably just follow the steps and then... Yeah, she doesn't really give you steps, she just gives you ideas and saying this is a good looking one this is not but she doesn't show you i think there is some examples of the shakespeare thing but we'll talk about that today also so this room was hopping a lot and i was busy working on it was hopping is that what you said it helping it was helping work oh good okay so let's go to let me get rid of that right now and that. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this stuff so that isn't confusing everybody. All right. Um, so I'm gonna go to the yellow book and show you the last part that will be on on the test. It's chapter five. We stopped on. Well, this is we're not on chapter seven. That won't be on the test. So here is contrast, go to chapter five, contrast. And so contrast is where various elements of the piece are used to draw a reader's eye into the page. And even though we've been using other points to do that, we've used color, we've used bold, that really was using a combination of these principles. But contrast not only serves to draw in the eye, but you can use it to organize information. Um, so it she it tells you one of the things, you know how Robin Williams talks, if you've watched her videos, is don't be a wimp whenever you do it. If two elements are sort of different, but not really, then you don't have contrast. You have conflict. You cannot contrast 12 point type with 14 point type because there's not enough difference. You cannot contrast dark brown with black 
because they're too close together, they would conflict. Get serious with your contrast. So here it says this guy here. Here, there's not enough difference. There, are these two the same guy? Are we supposed to see them as different? Well, only their hair is different. So it's not really very many contrasting elements there. But if you look at this picture, you see these two people are extremely different. If the two newsletters below came across your desk, which one would you pick up first? There's that one. And here's the other one. Which one would you like to look at? Second one, because there's extreme contrast, right? You see the heading very clear, whereas up here it is underlined and it there may be the, in this style a reason that you'd want to do that if you really did a lot of print you probably wouldn't have this cost a lot to put black ink in the background right so the then all of these headings are bolded enough that it gives you the contrast where you want to see it what do we see between this and this what principle is that where we have the black background here and we have a black down here. What's that called? Which one of those principles? Besides contrast, we know it has contrast. Uh, remember what the others are? We have proximity. Is it an example of proximity? Anybody? To have a black background here and a black background at the bottom. What would you think that is? Is it alignment? No. So what have I not said? Which one is it? Starts with an R. Remember our acronym? Contrast. What's the next one? Repetition. Good. That's the last one we did because here, not only is the borders repeated, but also they've used the same color of font and the same text to match different ones that are supposed to be standout ones. Here, can you feel how your eyes are drawn to this page rather than, yeah, that was talking about that newsletter. Now look at this resume. Now I want you to see what happens? Job titles are not clearly defined. Um, they blend in with the body text. The sections themselves are not clearly defined. There are two alignments on the page. The amounts of the space between the separate accomplishments are the same. Now, a resume is something that you really want to stand out, right? You want to get called in for an interview. Well, a resume is what's going to help that to happen and how well that resume is put together. And especially for a graphic designer, that's going to be really important. They want to see how you do with a printed document. Look at this. Is that going to stand out a little more? Yeah, it's more organized. More organized, they used color on it to emphasize like a frame and his bot, his profile right here is contact information. And then the titles there are all in that same color that um, makes there to be some repetition with the color. There's proximity used, right, when they redid it. And then contrast that we're looking at here is very good there. So there's how they corrected it. They made it have the same alignment. So along the same edge, so all um, the, you're seeing alignment and repetition. The heads are strong. You instantly know what this document is and what the key points are. And that's the contrast. The spatial relationships are the proximity. So um, on your projects that is putting it all together, you have to do something like this. Once you create those documents, you've got to address each one of those four principles and discuss how they are um, applied in that document like they did here. So when I tell you in the instructions for putting it all together, 
I say after you create those projects, then create a document that tells me how those principles are applied, okay? And that's what I mean is something like this, that you tell for each part of your document, where is repetition, where is contrast, where is proximity scene, okay? So go through all four of them telling how that's part of your project on the putting it all together. If you use um, a hairline rule between columns, use a strong two or four point rule when you need another. So here's one that they did. There's a bit of contrast between the typefaces, but look at this one, the stronger contrast. And down here, here's another way to do it. So there's not just one way, but just be sure that you are seeing contrast, not just like that first one. There is some contrast, but look how much better these look than that one up above. So this is simply another option using rules. Now here's, um, you can also do, it talks about the bulleted points that you could use up there too. But here's a, a Shakespeare thing. In addition to the contrast in the type faces in this postcard, there's also a contrast between the long horizontal title and the tall, narrow vertical columns. So the narrow columns are a repetitive element because you see in this postcard, we have repeated vertical columns. And then that's contrast with the heading and the long uh, border at the bottom are horizontal. So that's a big contrast that makes them stand out. So here's another like a um, flyer on detox the body. It's not centered, but it's pretty boring, right? How many of you would pick that up and read it? Anybody? No, it's got too much on there. Where do you begin to improve? Look at this. That might cause you to look at it a little better because it's got a little design in there. They've, sep they've grouped together with proximity the things that should be grouped together. They've done something with the font on the heading to make it more attractive. They've listed with bulleted points items that um, should be grouped together in list. So there's a lot of things they did there. Here's that other um, postcard that was done on Shakespeare. It's called a rack card when they're tall and skinny. And if you're a graphic designer, you're probably gonna be asked to do rack cards. You know, that's what those are down in our hallway for each of our degree programs. And our uh, marketing and graphic design department they designed those rack cards using Illustrator or InDesign, one of those two. Most of them like to use Illustrator. And so a rack card, you know, is a narrow card that you'll see a lot of places when we go to the doctor's office, sometimes it'll have rack cards of all the doctors in that clinic. So if you're a graphic designer, that's something that you need to know how to do in custom sizes and shapes. This rack card is a little flat, but here's one where they did it on a, this I'm sure is probably on a black card stock. And then they printed it with the red and the white. So those are things that they did. And we've seen this one before, I think, in one of the other chapters. But here's where what they changed it. She actually changed it to have different colors she created repetitive elements, uh, grouped things into logical proximity. She used different alignments. See how those are aligned different where this is aligned centered, all right? So she changed the alignment. Um, here shows, this is another way that you can define your document. See how she's got it here? You can see that this ad needs to have the information organized into logical units which is called the principle of proximity. It also needs to choose an alignment, the principle of alignment. It could use a repetitive element, principle of repetition, and it needs contrast, which you will have to create. 
So that's what they did here. Here's another one like that. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to create those two documents using those files, zip folders that I gave you. And then you're going to go back and you're going to tell me what you did to apply the principle of proximity, or if you didn't have to do anything, just say where certain things are grouped together. So read through this information and <clears throat> on the on the test, the midterm, it will have um, things that are in blackboard print. It will have things that are the summary, like summary of contrast. Contrast on a page draws our eyes to it. Our eyes like contrast. And so some, what the basic purpose of contrast is, how to get it, what, here's different techniques to use to get the contrast, what to avoid if you're trying to create contrast. And then this chapter on design with type is also things that can be on the test because it's still talking about contrast but doing it with all different kinds of type or text. And the essentials of typography, typography is really important with, to a graphic designer. How many of you have ever used fonts that you, that you created? Anybody create a font before? So as an artist, as a graphic designer, if you go to work for a big company, they may want their own font that's not out there, that they don't have to buy but that distinguishes them from other businesses. And also we remember what we talked about last time about branding, a logo can either be simply a logo type, which is like Rose State, um, Rose State College has now. It can be a logo mark, which means that it, the logo has a symbol. So there are different ways to brand yourself and you may have both because I showed you where in some instances at Rose State they are still using the um, little star thing. Okay, so let's go and so you'll want to look at some of these like here's where they use capitals, setting words in all caps to call attention to them. But you, have you ever gotten an email where it was all caps like that from somebody? I don't think so. Have you not? Ooh, I get them. <laughs> I get them from my dean. It's like he's yelling at you. <laughs> you know, uh, people don't realize sometimes uh, I've done that accidentally. I've left caps on and I'll look back up at it. And I, oh, I can't send that like that because that's not a good way to say that, you know? Mm -hmm. So if we sometimes want something to be like that, then we can put it in all caps. Obviously, we can read all caps and sometimes all caps is perfect. Then there's underlining. We can use underlining sometimes. Do not use the underline button ever. When was the last time you saw a word underlined in a book or a magazine? you usually, it's only if you're taking notes and you underline it, right? They don't usually do that anymore. So here's, um, there's, this phrase has a double rule under it. That's what you put, you, don't, you use rules, not underline like that. So this sentence includes bold italic for emphasis instead of an underline. So kerning, we talked about, I think in here, we talked about kerning. Kerning is the space between letters. You cannot change the space between letters if you're using Microsoft Word. So what Adobe products let you do that? You can ch change the kerning and, and the others called letting. You might've called it leading, L-E-A-D-I-N-G. It's called letting. What's the letting? Anybody know? If you've worked in a print shop or if you've worked with InDesign, you would know, but you can also adjust it in Illustrator too. I don't think <coughs> Photoshop. <coughs> so kerning, you can, <coughs> excuse me, change the distance between letters. See how these letters are further apart. You can hear it says hand kerning was applied. So you can go in there and make spaces, but you have to be able to have control of the letters to do that, like in one of the Adobe products, not in Microsoft Word. That's what I remember doing. 
the kerning, which one? This one? Um, spacing them. Yes, yeah, spacing them. It is about making the space between the letters appear to be visually consistent. So sometimes when you're making a logo type, you might want to use kerning because there's a reason that you want to space a letter, even if it's not the actual place where a word divides. And then there is letting. So what do you think letting is? We're not going to talk about it here, I don't think. Letting is the distance between the lines of, of type. So you can adjust that too. And you know you do single space and double space, but what if you want 1.3 between it? You That you can adjust with um, some of the different programs. Window, widows and orphans, obviously we're not talking about bereaved widows and orphans here. What they're talking about here, when the line of a paragraph has fewer than seven characters, that last line is called a widow. Worse than leaving one word as the last line is leaving part of a word. But nowadays, that's what I was telling you, there's some new <laughs> styles on t-shirts where they leave a letter at the end at, to make it a block on the t-shirt and the words are done in block letters like I was showing you with Rose State College, how they made it into a block with the letters. Okay, so these are things that are part of using um, the contrast of type using the type as contrast. And so it talks some more about paragraph and dense. Here's some things that you can do with text. Use bullets or ornaments in a list, not hyphens. So when listing items, please don't use hyphens. It looks so sad. The standard bullet um, is just as easy to type as a hyphen or use a character from a dingbat. What's a dingbat? I know. What is it, Jake? <laughs> like that's probably one. Yeah, that's probably one right there. It's it's part of um, a font. It's the part of a font. I thought that was going to tell us. Uh, like these, a dingbat is a small ornamental character like these. And every font has those. They're sometimes called wingdings too, um, which are made up of dingbats. So at the end of the font, there's little characters that you can use and um, make it a little bit more um, graphically pleasing. So there's some more of it apostrophes were up here. I didn't even go over there. So in that new design uh, in your yellow book, there are little quizzes that I used to make students turn in, but I don't anymore because the answers are in the back of the book. But be sure that you look these up. Little quiz number four, apostrophes. It says, um, I include this quiz because it is so important to know these little things to prevent your work from looking silly. It's or it's, I-T apostrophe S yes, with an apostrophe always means it is. You remember your grammar? Contractions. 100% of the time below, enter the correct form, it's or it's. So it's that has the apostrophe, uh, Some if it's after it, it can show ownership. So all the, um, answers to these, it shows you what pages they're on. So it's important that you understand dashes, hyphens, in dash. The in dash is approximately the width of a capital letter N in the font and size you are typing. Thus, it is longer than the hyphen. Use it between words that indicate a duration. So like October through December, you'll notice this in seven through 12, those, that is not just the short dash, that is the end dash, it's called, which is longer. Then there's an M dash, which is a real long one. See this one? To type the dashes, see the charts on the following pages. And it shows you Alt 
1045 is the opening single quote. So to create these characters in Windows, you can almost always use what's called the ANSI codes. Turn on NumLock and use the numeric keypad on the right side of your keyboard. So that's how you do it on a PC. Special characters on the Mac. If you want an opening single quote like this, you would do option bracket. And these are, this is showing you how to get those. Option hyphen is the end dash. Option shift hyphen is the longer one, which is M dash. If you want to get ellipse, did you know how to do all these? Copyright is option G. So this is how to get these to print on your actual document, which sometimes you don't see a key for it on your keyboard, so you don't know how to do it. Okay, so this is, um, oops, go back to, so we did the design with type and design principles. And so after midterm, we'll start um, into here, but I probably won't go over these, but they will be um, actually on the last test, the rest of the book chapter, I can't remember what chapter that is, let's see. We did five and, oh wait, go the essentials, see where that is. Yeah, we did that one, which I thought was five. Oh no, that's okay. So up through here is what um, you'll be tested over. I think it said 12, I didn't bring my book up here. <clears throat> Okay, so any questions about, about that? What's in this book? What you're tested over? On that test one, which is the midterm. Okay, so today what I wanna do is show you also, um, let me go over here. Oh, did I not add it? Yeah, there's the InDesign. So here are the two um, exercises that will be due. Uh, this one is due tomorrow night, the InDesign. And if you click on it, it should take you, here's the instructional InDesign. And we're gonna go ahead and look at this portion so you can see what you're doing. So you will download, you'll do a, a 16 minute tutorial and a 20 minute tutorial. That's the only two that you have to do over here. This one is an overview of what you use InDesign for. Do I have anybody in here that's real good on InDesign, likes InDesign? And most, most graphic designers don't, but it's good for creating printed documents. But a lot of the things, if you learn Illustrator really well, then you probably won't use InDesign. Then this is the add text one. And the reason we're doing this one is because uh, one of those projects you might want to use in design if you see how to, how to do it with this little tutorial. All right, so what I wanted to see, how many have done up through lesson five in XD? Have I done that? No? Okay, so XD, um, let me see, who's my, let me go back and get the names again, I can't remember. Who's my, my marketing guy, what, what's your name? Eric, right? Um, did you get your XD to, did you ever get it? Yeah, my, I got the XD to work, but XD does. But XD does, and that's what you'll need the most yeah. anyway. Okay. Chapter three on XD. Who who's um, who's worked through that much of uh, XD? Because I'm going to ask you a question probably on that test, and you're going to get extra points when I see what you've done in XD. Because I don't want you to wait till the last minute. Because if you do, you won't be able to work on your final project. Okay. So I want to see um, where everybody's at. Does anybody need any help with XD? 
or Illustrator, any of those. Okay, so if it will help you, we can do them in class. Otherwise, I will just let you work through that stuff because I've pretty much given you everything up through midterm um, that I want you to do. And by um, the Monday, the 16th, I want you to have the idea for your final project. And that's going to be a paragraph narrative that you'll put in up here. Where's it at on final? Uh, final project, it says over here under assignments, there's one that says final project idea. See down here? Um, oh, you can't see it yet because it says not available. I'm going to open that up because that idea is worth 10 points before you ever start on your project. So you need to get that in so that I can approve your idea. Okay. All right. So these things, most, some of you are having to do in class. So I'll let you work on those. If you are working from home, that's fine. But I need to see um, some assignments for some of you have not done some of the assignments. But these are the ones that are due. So remember, this one, Photoshop is due tomorrow night at midnight, as is InDesign. Both of those are due tomorrow at midnight. And the um, putting it all together, I'm actually giving you two weeks because it's two sets of documents, but you can't do it in five minutes. So be sure you download those folders and uh, work on those two documents. You can watch her, her assignment video and then go from there. So anybody having questions? This class is just supposed to give you like an overview, but you need to learn to at least be able to use XD fluently because that's the one that your final project is in. And it's just a real drag and drop thing and using the tools, if you become familiar with those, um, then that will really help. But since you have those videos with um, XD, then I don't think we need to go through them in class. Y'all can do them independently, but some of you um, need to let me know if you need me to help you go through anything. Okay. Okay, any questions? Everybody's okay? All right. Then we're done soon. And Wednesday, Wednesday will be a work day too. I'm not going to lecture over anything new on Wednesday. So if you, the thing is, this is the class time that I'm giving you if you need any help. So if you're behind on assignments, I expect to see you in here on Wednesday. Okay. Otherwise, I'm assuming that you have no problems and you've got them all caught up. I think I got most of them. Let me see what else hasn't been graded in here. Oh, I see some illustrator ones. And that's about it. Alignment has two people has that one done. 